Hey, you're listening to As Not Seen on TV. Like what you hear? Leave us a review. We love the feedback. Thanks. And my mother said, Lale, my son, don't cry. One day, you're going to kill your child. Your friend is going to kill their child. And I decided, I said, one day, if I'm strong, I'm going to save these children's lives. Are you there, bud? Can you hear me, Lolly? That's a great start. Uh, only our fourth podcast, and our guest is unable to get a Wi-Fi signal to connect with us. Lolly. Are you back? See if we can get him back. I'm going to call you on my phone. Hang up on this one. Yeah, we got you back. But then again, when your guest lives on the Ethiopian border with Kenya and Sudan, spotty Wi-Fi, yeah, kind of makes sense. This is the small, and I mean small, market town of Jinka, Ethiopia, located on the southernmost part of this massive East African nation. And while you won't find a local Starbucks here for your daily fix of a nitro cold brew, easy splash of cream, you're always just steps away from local cafes like this. You know, as long as you're okay with other customers deciding to join you. Just getting the drink itself from the U.S. is no small journey. A long flight from L.A. to Germany, Germany to Addis Ababa, the capital of Ethiopia, and then uh, pretty much a once-a-day puddle jumper. And I guess in the not-so-blink of an eye, you're in Jinka. In this case, I was with my close friend and travel buddy, Dr. Moody Alexander. This time, we were about to head off the grid. And it was all because of this man, Lali Labuko. Lali, how did you personally get involved with this issue of Mingi? It had something to do in your own family when you were small, did it not? The word Mingi, I never heard until I was 15 years old. The Mingi, what the Mingi means? So when I was 15 years old, I came to the village and the first time I see maybe five, six elders come and grab two years old baby. And the mother was crying, child was crying. And they just grabbed from the mother and they ran to the river. And I was shocked. I said, why they do this? So I followed the, the, the elders to the river and I was hiding myself and I saw when the elders uh, drowned the child in the river and the child was killed. And I was very shocked and crying. I said, there's something happened. But when they took the baby, they say the word Mingi, which I never heard until I was 15 years old. So I asked my mother, and I said, Ma, I saw people took two-year-old baby, and they ran toward the river and brown child, and they said, Mingi, and the mother was crying. And they told the mother not to cry. They said, Mingi means what? And my mother was trying to hide from me. She said, oh, Lale, I don't want to tell you this. And I said, Ma, Please tell me what happened. And then my mother started explaining me for the first time. And then she said, Lale Mingi means curse. And at that two years old baby was teasing Mingi. That's why the elders took the baby to the, to the river to kill the child because there is no rain. People are hungry, drought because of the baby. And I was crying, and my mother said, Lale, you have two older sisters. Those who was killed by, they were killed by Mingi practice. And it was a very difficult time for me, Drew, very difficult time, because my mother didn't tell me. Wow. And that's why Lali has spent the last years defying the tribes, the villagers, the elders, and even the kings by doing something to Mingi children nobody had ever done before. Loving the Mingi cursed children. Lali risked his own life by rescuing and negotiating the release of over 50 Mingi. Perfectly healthy children condemned to death by their very own parents, families, and tribes who believed they were cursed. 
and would bring a bigger curse to the village if they were not subject to an awful form of death. When they consider the child is sick, once they identify, they sometimes, if they live near to the river, they drown in the river. Sometimes they left in the bush so the wild animals can eat. Sometimes they push off the cliff so they die. Sometimes they put the dirt in the mouth so they cannot breathe or use a rope to strangle them and kill the baby. It's horrific. But why exactly would a tribe declare a child mingi or cursed? One very common reason is teeth. The tribes believe if a child's teeth grow in from the top before the bottom, the child is mingi. If a woman gets pregnant before marriage, or if a couple get pregnant without the proper blessing from the elders, the child is mingi. And it's the same fate Tenzi experienced. She was near certain death from forced starvation when Lali rescued her several years ago. So this is Tinsai. Uh, she was uh, uh, born as Mingi in Korcho village. And she was left in the hut for two weeks, only water, no milk, because they believe if she drink the milk, it's going to be a Mingi and a curse for the land. So the tribes of Kara, uh, maybe six years ago, uh, didn't give her any milk or any food. So she became very, very skeleton and we brought her, uh, we rescued her, and she's today like this, Tensai. She's very healthy, no trauma, nothing, she's very healthy. Tensai is one of over 50 Mingi children left to die. Now, Tensai lives here with her 50 plus brothers and sisters. That's right, over 50 Mingi children rescued by Lili, all under one roof. The Omo Hope Orphanage, playing, laughing, eating, and learning beyond a doubt they are anything but a curse. Remember, every sign that you have up, every message that you deliver to the kids is just constantly reminding these 51 kids that, to your point, that they are not cursed, but they are a blessing. And you kept repeating that message that every one of you are a blessing, not cursed. Yeah, so I think, um, you know, it's a very difficult job, but for me, my wife and I, we are very happy when we first, when we do rescue of the first time. And, you know, what I have said is when I see these children, I see my sisters in their eyes because they represent my sisters, those who were killed. They represent the child who was killed in front of me. For me is to bring someone to life is you doing God's work and gives them hope. They, they are blessing it means it's hope. Blessing is hope because so many people forgotten them. So many children were left in the bush, but saying they are blessing. Some of the older girls in your orphanage, when they, they're studying to be doctors, they want to be doctors when they get older, and they told me they want to go back to their tribes in the village to practice medicine and to help the tribes, the same people who tried to kill them when they were babies that you rescued. They want to be doctors and go back and help the tribe. Yeah, so many times I think uh, they already understand the situation, I think. Uh, and also many times I speak with them. We have conversation many times, I think. They have a passion. They have very good hearts for the tribe, for Ethiopia, for even for the world. I think I see they have really good hearts to, they have good heart. They have big vision. They have big things. They're dreaming big to do something really good for the tribe. They have no anger, no animosity, the opposite. They want to go back and help no. their families. No. No. Yes, no. So we teach them in the church. I teach them for forgiveness. You know, I told them I forgive. I already forgive for my family. I already forgive for my friends and for my fathers, for my elders, because they killed my sisters. I didn't take any revenge on them. So I told them 
I rescued you, but you have to forgive for your parents. You have to forgive for your uh, family members and elders and the king because they didn't do this intentionally. And that's all for part one today, guys. Hit subscribe to stay tuned for part two next week because the thought of killing your own children was so incomprehensible to us. We go with Lali on a trip to one of the villages where Mingi is still a practice today and meet the tribes face to face.